about 43, I had a question coming out of chapter 12, number 100. And here we were told that it's been estimated that only about 30% of California residents have adequate earthquake supplies. And we're going to take a look at 11 residents. So I can hear that I have my sample of 11 residents. And I'm basically going to go up to each of them and say, hey, do you have adequate earthquake supplies, right? And they're either going to tell me yes or no. It's a uh, up or down kind of vote. And I'm going to go ahead and keep track of the number who have added, uh, excuse me, the number who have adequate earthquake supplies. So I hear this phrase, the number of, and I, I want to mention that because we're looking at, it's going to be a frequency count. And our variable here is categorical in, in the sense that, well, I mean, let me, let me back this up. For each individual resident, our variable is categorical, right? Because we're going to ask them, hey, do you have earthquake supplies? And they're either going to tell me yes or no, right? And that's going to be, again, a success or a failure. But over the entire sample, we're actually going to keep track of the number who say yes. And that is our numerical variable. And so since we're looking at this frequency, since we have this number, Right, we we say to ourselves, okay, what if I've got this discrete numerical variable? What might my sample space be? And as I look at this, I can actually see I have a typo on this. If I'm being totally blunt, um, here's what I mean by that. Looking at part B, and I, I will change this so that when you download the solutions, it's correct. B is missing an, a number from its sample space. So if I talk to eleven residents, zero of them could have adequate supplies. One to all the way up to 11. So just taking a look at this, there's an error in that there should have been a zero preceding the one. And I, I will change that. All right, so that's what we've got going on with A and B. We've talked about in words what it means, uh, what our random variable is, and then we've actually listed out our sample space. Now, in terms of the distribution, it's discrete. So I could, if I wanted to, make a pretty long table, right? Zero, one, two, three, all the way up to 11. And I'd have to make a pretty intense tree diagram, right? For the yeses and nos, I'd have to say 30% to 70%. And then another set of yes, no, 30% to 70%. And imagine, oops, let me write yes and no. Imagine the tree diagram you would have to do. Because at this point, I've only done two folks being asked. I have to go out to 11 folks being asked. So I'm going to go through and say, hey, well, maybe this discrete numerical variable is binomial. And let's go through the four properties. Did I have a fixed number of observations? I did, right? So I can check that off. Could I call something a success? And I could. It says, you know, like, hey, they would say yes to that question. I have adequate earthquake supplies. So let me write CA resident has adequate earthquake supplies. All right, and then are these trials independent? Well, if I'm gonna talk to a random sample, right, these trials are gonna be independent. I'm not gonna assume that just because one person has adequate supplies that has any effect on whether the next person will have adequate earthquake supplies. And they told me my success rate is about 30%. So since I can put check marks by all four of these, I get to write my squiggles. And that's nice, because that means, and I'll, I'll write this with a different color here, I don't have to make a table. This, I get to write in lieu of my table. And I would argue that this right here is so much faster to write than making a table and making that tree diagram. All right, so let me start to clean some of this up because it gets a little junked up. All right, so as I'm going through this, now let's go over to part D. It says, what is the probability that at least eight have adequate earthquake supplies. So if I'm thinking about at least eight, and I'm gonna go ahead and write out my sample space here, at least just the top row so we can do this. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Okay, if I hear the phrase at least eight, I think of it in terms of greater than or equal to. And, and if that's how your brain works, when I hear at least, I know it goes with greater than or equal to, then, then fantastic. But sometimes people need to write it out as eight or more. And that's fine too. So if you hear at least eight, that's like saying greater than or equal to eight or eight or more. So if I want eight or more, I want to include eight, nine, 10, and 11 in my, my tally. And so you could add those four PDFs together. So I, I just want to take a little side note here. You could do the probability that X is 8 and add to it the probability that X is 9. 
add to the probability that x is 10, and add to the probability that x is 11. You could add those four PDFs together. Add, and I'm going to say four PDFs, and I mean by that four binomial PDFs. Um, if you wanted. Now, I, I'm lazy, or I, I guess I should say I'm efficient, and I, I don't like doing that. So I want to only use one calculator command. So if I want 8 on up, right, what I do not want is the complement. I do not want 7 on down. So I do not want to include 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And we do have an on down calculator command, and that is binomial CDF. So if I don't want 7 on down, I'm going to take the complement here. I'm going to use the complement rule. So I'm going to use 100%, and I'm going to subtract out the things I don't want. And again, that is from 7 on down. And when I crunch that, I get 0 0.004. And you would have gotten the same thing if you had added these four PDFs together. All right, part E says, it, is it more likely that none or that all of the residents surveyed will have adequate earthquake supplies. So if it's none, that means I want zero having adequate earthquake supplies. If it's all, I want 11 having adequate earthquake supplies. So because we have the equal sign here, I'm going to use binomial PDF. All right, and I crunched it for um, zero and 11, and I found it was point or 2% versus point oh oh. Oh, oh, two percent. So you can see it's more likely that none of the residents surveyed will have adequate earthquake supplies, and that's because this number is larger. And the last part says, How many residents do you expect to have adequate earthquake supplies? Well, whenever we hear expect, right, or really a lot of times we'll hear expected value, that's another word for mean or average. And when you're in a binomial experiment, the formula is just n times p. So I'm quite literally going to take my n, my 11, um, 11 residents in my survey, and my 30% chance of success. And that just means that I expect about, if I talk to 11 people, I expect about 3.3 to have adequate earthquake supplies. And I know that you can't have 0.3 people having earth, adequate earthquake supplies, but that's still the numerical average. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.